Good afternoon, everyone. So I hope you can all see my, my screen, the presentation. Yes. Okay. So my name is Sewell Tukam, and uh, today I'm going to talk about a deep learning algorithm using CT images to, to predict the coronavirus disease, the famous, the popular COVID-19. So my work was supervised by Dr. Alessandro Quimi. So before starting with the algorithm, let us first talk about the purpose of this research. So two main reasons behind this research, those are to stop, to reduce the spread of the disease and also predict the coronavirus ahead of pathogenic testing. So let's say you have, we have to fasten the, the, the appearance of the result. Okay. With that being said, we need to start with some, with the background knowledge. Initially, to detect the COVID-19, we used a test we call SWAP. It's actually, we collect some liquid deep inside your nose and we perform some genetic tests on it to actually say or diagnose whether you have the COVID-19. But for our research or for this research specifically, we are going to use what we call a chest CT scan. So usually we use it for serious respiratory issues. So we now get into it. Our, to build the algorithm, actually three steps were performed. The first step is to collect the data. And the data here are the city images. The city images coming from the, the computer. Those are raw images. And the second step is to perform what we call the modified inception transfer learning. Actually, for this case, what I can say is, you remember for Tony's presentation, for the, the, for the malaria, he used the AlexNet architecture. For Ignatius, the cerebral presentation, he used the VISA. But for my own, I'm going to use the M inception transfer learning. I will speak about that in detail. And the third part is the validation. The validation is simply just to verify how accurate is the model by using what we call the test, a test data set. So let me continue with the algorithm. So now, first thing, collection of data. So to actually evaluate or to build this algorithm, we collected 1,065 city images uh, in which 740 were COVID-19 negative and the remaining one, 325, they were actually diagnosed with COVID-19. So, Let's talk about now the feature of the COVID-19 pneumonia. Here at, at my right, I have actually the, a, a figure or an image of this chest CT scan. This is actually the lens for someone who has the COVID-19. Here we are going to be interested in these two main features. You will see here we have like a gray circle. This gray circle on your lungs simply means that your lung is infected. And when it's infected, it can be filled with some liquid. Then you will be, it will be difficult for you to breathe. So just gray lungs, the higher it is, the more infected your lung is. And the second feature actually we're going to be interested in is the, what we call the curvature, the curvature of your lung. So now you are, we are going to continue. So now this is actually the M inception learning I was talking about. So this transfer learning, just like Ignatius said, usually in the medical field, the data are not enough to build a very a strong accurate model. So we usually use transfer learning to extract the feature from the images we have, in my case, from the images. So how does it work? I've written on the slide the three steps. I'm going to explain them in detail. Actually, what comes from the chest CT scan is what we call a raw image. So now this image is going to be processed using some steps. And the first thing is actually to convert the image into a grayscale. You will see this is a picture, like kind of a black and white picture, this one. So the first thing is to convert the image into a grayscale. How do we do that? Each color on the, on the scan, 
can be translated into how gray it is. So this is what we call actually uh, grayscaling. Let me say grayscaling the image. Once it's done, we binarize the grayscale. Actually, for this case, it's a bit complicated, the binary part, because it involves a process we call analog to digital conversion. Long story short, a computer doesn't understand numbers. A computer doesn't know what two centimeter is, what three meter cube is, but they understand the binary numbers. So this is actually what binarizing scale means. So, and now the last step is actually now to predict or to use the algorithm to predict whether our result is accurate or is correct or not. So after that, I am going to show you the M inception learning that was used to build the algorithm. So here we have the convolution layer. So just like in the previous presentation, usually from one convolution, from the first convolution layer, one feature is extracted. The second convolution layer, another feature can be extracted, and so and so on. So let's say the algorithm, we built it, it learns from what it sees from the picture, and this time, and from this case, the processed picture, not the raw one. So he takes the processed picture and extracts the feature from it now to build like a general model that will be able to predict given another image and will be able to say whether for these lungs it is COVID-19 positive or COVID-19 negative. So now I'm going to talk about the result of the algorithm. So actually before going to the results I would like first to talk about the number of images that were used. So for this case 320 processed image because the previous one, the 1065 images were raw images that were taken from patients. But from this one, processed image that have gone through the M inception algorithm, that are, that are going through the M inception algorithm, we have we have two 320 images from which half of it will be from patients that are actually that were diagnosed COVID negative and the other half. COVID-19 positive. So these are the results we get so far. The deep learning performance based on internal and external validation. Just like I said before, validation simply means you take a random image, you actually subject it to the algorithm and you see where, what will be the result. And something I will talk about is what we call the AUC because I think most of us are not really familiar with this term. We, in the previous presentation, we talked about accuracy, the sensitivity, the specificity, but this AUC is kind of new. It's actually what we call area under the curve. I will share with you what it means. Just one second, I will show you the image. So, uh, yeah, this is the picture. I share, take the screen, I share. Okay. Uh, can you all see my screen? All right. So this is what we call the AUC area under the curve. For this particular case, it's 93%. So here on the y-axis, we have what we call the true positive rate. True positive means you are actually sick, and the algorithm says you're sick. So actually, the, di the diagnosis or the result output by the algorithm is actually correct. So we need, we therefore need this area to be as high as possible for our algorithm to be very reliable. That is all about the AUC. So this is actually the graph. I will go back to my presentation. Uh, yeah, this is image, and yeah. So, and now I hope you can see my presentation now. Yes. Now we are the second performance characteristics is actually uh, okay. I don't really know what they decided to do this comparison. They actually compare the performance of the algorithm with the performance of skilled radiologists. What does it mean? Like you take the images, you let the radiologist see and tell you whether for this image it is COVID nineteen positive or COVID nineteen negative. So for this case, we see like. For the accuracy, the first radiology had 55.8% uh, accuracy. It's actually normal because you cannot rely on your eyes to detect whether you have COVID-19 or not. It's going to be like, can be very confusing. So 
that is actually the second, let's say, performance index that they use to well, that tell us if the algorithm is reliable or not. So now we are going to jump into the limitation of this model. So actually we have two main limitation for this model. The first one is it for the images, there are some parts of on the image that are not useful to us. What we are really looking into is just the lungs. But the part outside the lungs is actually appearing, but it's useless. And we know that in any image can be translated into a matrix. So the bigger the matrix, the more memory it takes. So sometimes it can slow down the computer. So actually this is one limitation. And the second limitation is actually the lack, or let's say the data sets are not huge enough. So since the data set is not big enough, sometimes the reliability of the algorithm might be less. Let's say the more, the better. The more data we have, the more sample we have, the more item we have, the better the, our algorithm will be. So uh, this is my reference. Actually, the study was made by the Department of Molecular Radiation Oncology in China, Changing Hospital, and uh, I thank you for listening. That's all for today. So any question for me, please? I don't see the hand thing. Uh, ah, the participant, okay. Yeah, there is Deo. Deo, you're up. Um, for me, I wanted to know, as you are doing the like, chest scanning, do you take into account other diseases that can affect the chest? Uh, can you repeat the question, please? I didn't really understand. Yeah. I like when you are taking the chest uh, scanning, uh, I believe that there are other diseases that can affect the chest or maybe they can, uh, they, they, they can affect the lungs. You take into account those apart from you specifically maybe um, be interested in the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. You take into account other diseases. Oh, all right. For this case, we don't take into account other diseases. Maybe what I can tell it's about like the difference between the COVID-19 pneumonia and the viral and the typical viral pneumonia. So actually the difference between these two diseases is because actually the algorithm doesn't make a difference. But what I can say biologically speaking, for the COVID-19 pneumonia, your lungs will be infected but filled with liquids. But for typical viral pneumonia, your lungs will be filled with air, with air. So basically for this case, we only let's say for the two diseases, we see those gray shades on the chest CT scan. So that's just what I can say about the other diseases that, that can be involved in the, in the research. Okay, that's good. Other questions? Ah, no, no, the COVID-19 doesn't attack the brain. Oh, sorry, I have a question from Bernard. He's asking me whether the COVID-19 attacks the brain. So I was telling, after researching on this topic, the COVID-19 doesn't attack the brain. It only affects the lungs. Only the lungs get infected. That's all. There were some cases that they found in brain tissue, but we still don't know how it, where it happened. Maybe it's, it's completely in, unrelated. But anyway. Okay, thank you, Sorel. So I think we can close now the... Group picture. We try to make a group picture. Oh. <laughs> Come on, guys, activate your camera. One. Yes, 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 yes. 36. Hey, Ramatsu. <laughs> <laughs>
I, I, I will take a picture then I share, I send to you, or you can take your own picture as well. Just put your video on and then. Ah, and then quick, quick, and then there is a question about the, the assignment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 Yes.